I'm trying something new here with this video, I mean. Tips and techniques usually aren't my bag. Evidently, I'm more of a projects kind of guy. And you know, there are plenty of other great YouTube channels out there that like to get into the details. And probably a lot better than I do. But I don't think I've ever seen anyone cover this grinding fixture. So let me know what you think of these more nuts and bolts kind of videos and maybe I can do some more. Oh, and one last thing. My apologies if this video title was a little misleading and you came here looking for answers to your gastrointestinal thing. Three, maybe four years ago, I vaguely recall having ordered some diamond wheels. They just came in a couple of days ago. They're import quality. I don't know if they're any good, but at less than $20 each, I figured it was worth a gamble. This one has diamond on the face and this has it on the edge. Between the two, I think they got me covered. I got these to try to sharpen my carbide end mills. As you know, these things can get pretty expensive and if I can squeeze a little bit more life out of them, well, heck, that'd be super. Thought it might be of interest to showcase this style of end mill grinding fixture. This one in particular is the Stevenson ER32 version. Usually they're 5C, I believe. I've often wondered exactly who these things are marketed to. It keeps me up at nights. If you're running a business, you probably wouldn't screw around with stuff like this. Throw your bad end mill out and buy a new one. Time is money, right? And even someone who potentially goes through a lot of end mills, like a production outfit, manufacturing operation, likely has its own machine shop with a proper tool and cutter grinder. Is someone out there implying that us hobbyists are cheap bastards? Right, so let's get down to brass tacks here. Just like its clever name subtly implies, an end mill sharpening fixture is for sharpening end mills. With one of these and a surface grinder, you can sharpen the ends of your mills. Uh, just the ends, mind you, not the flutes. Flutes are another can of worms entirely. Now, I already know what some of you may be thinking, and I'd highly recommend against that. So we'll see it better in just a minute on the surface grinder. But this clever lump of metal has the cutting and clearance angles already built in. I think that's four or five degrees in one direction, two degrees in another, and 30 degrees for the clearance angle. It's also got a simple indexer that will do a, you know, two, three, four, six, and 12 flute end mills. So let's just have a quick intimate look at one of these end mills, shall we? This is just your plain vanilla, half inch, two flute, high speed steel end mill. If all goes well, this is the geometry that that grinding fixture will impart to the end mill that you load into it. So if you try to sharpen a ball nose end mill, it's gonna end up looking like this. So maybe just to state the obvious, it's only going to do sort of this fundamental geometry. So no chamfer mills, no spotting drills, no bull nose, no ball end mills. But since this is 99% of what I use down here, it turns out handy. So the first thing it's gonna cut is this primary cutting edge relief. And at the same time, it'll give it a bit of a taper from the tip of the flute to the center. So it's somewhat concave, let's say. And when you kick the fixture up into its second position on the surface grinder, it'll set you up to grind the secondary relief. You may also notice there's a third grind behind that secondary relief angle. I believe that's what they like to call the gash. It essentially forms the very most center of the cutter and sets the web thickness, if there's any to set. Think split point drills. Anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later. So that's it. Sounds deceptively straightforward, doesn't it? The reality of it, at least for me, or in my experience, is that I can rarely throw something like a two flute on the surface grinder in this fixture and in four licks get it back to the way it used to look. But it's usually a simple matter of, you know, making some fine adjustments, usually in the rotation based on the grinds that you just did. So that said, I think I'm gonna jump right into this carbide end mill. This is a three flute carbide end mill. It really should just be thrown away a cheap best. This was pulling off some spectacular surface finishes for me until one day it met its end. A part abruptly came loose in the vise. It wasn't pretty. But before I get to the ones that are in a, a little bit better condition, the ones worth sharpening, I think I could get some good practice out of this thing, see how the diamond wheels perform. And I'm hoping this might serve to true up the diamond wheels a little bit. I have no idea how you dress these things. Have some kind of Norton kryptonite. I'm sure you can't see it on camera. I'm having trouble seeing it here 
under the light, but I can feel that the surface is, is quite lumpy. I won't be using this one. I'll use the, the wheel with the diamond on the perimeter. I've got that in the grinder already. I just mounted it quickly and took it for a spin to make sure it wasn't flying all over the place. But it seems to be running true, but it's also got the same lumpiness. Here, see if you can feel that. Here's the other wheel mounted on the grinder. I'm wondering if you can almost see that if I move the light around. It's got almost like facets. I wonder if I hit that with my grimy finger. You see those high spots? So getting the end mill properly oriented with respect to the fixture, I've always found to be really the trickiest part. Not really tricky, I mean it's not difficult. But I found that if I get this right, then the grinding seems to go a lot better. The fixture goes in the grinder along sort of its long axis, right? So the wheel's up here. And I want to make sure that the grind is going to happen, you know, where I need it, perpendicular to the cutting edge. Of course, I had done gone ahead and picked a three flute end mill. So I want one of my flutes perpendicular to this fixture. So you wouldn't want your collet squeezing on the flutes, but as we've already established, this thing is trash. An end mill with an even number of flutes, you can usually just either eyeball across the flutes with a straight edge or use a square. I just picked up the top and now I'm going to dial the height gauge down by half the end mill diameter. And then use that as a stop to align the end mill. Now that's what I would do if I was just giving it a couple of licks to bring back its cutting edges. But since this thing is so far gone, I'm actually going to turn this a bit more in time to basically what is the lowest undamaged spot. Because the end mill has a helix to it, the further back you take the surface, the further back you grind that tip, you know, the, the timing of the cutting flutes will change as you go deeper into that helix. Essentially, I'm trying to guess where I'll end up after having ground away all the broken part of the end mill. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just cut the end off of this end mill. And that's usually what I'd do. If it was a high speed steel end mill, just lop off the bad part and grind the new edge on there. But I'm not sure what this grinding wheel is capable of. And I think I have less material to remove if I start this way. Maybe I should have just lopped it off and this is just adding some confusion. But this wheel might technically only be for sharpening and not for full facial reconstruction. So I've zeroed out my hand wheel and I have an indicator here to keep an eye on the depth. There are a couple of one, two, three blocks in the back just to square my fixture up to the table. The fixture is pointing in the right direction so that I get a center, like a hollow ground in the center and the ends of the flutes are higher. Before I get to grinding this, just a couple of things I should have probably mentioned a lot earlier. First of all, this isn't the way end mills and cutters, etc. are really supposed to be ground. This should be done on a proper tool and cutter grinder. This fixture is more just a hack to add a little bit more functionality to a surface grinder. I think it's meant only just to give a light touch up and bring an edge back to maybe not even a full on dull end mill, but a dulling end mill. I don't think it's meant for this aggressive of a, of a reshaping. Oh, by the way, grinding carbide is highly toxic. Wear your breathing protection. You know what? This wheel is actually doing pretty decent. I mean, it's moving uh, more than I thought it would. So I'm going to go back to plan A and just cut the top off of this. So I cut the tip off and you saw me square up the end. I set it up again just like before on the surface plate. And I've got my hand wheel and my indicator zeroed. Let's see how this works. So there are the three primary reliefs. It looks like I got those on center. I'm just going to hit this with some Sharpie. 
so I can keep track of what's happening while I cut the secondary relief. I'm gonna go back to my index here. Let's hope this still fits when I pick the fixture up. So those are the secondary grinds. I haven't taken them all the way. I just want to sort of check my progress here. I mean, that looks like it's starting to come in, but I gotta be honest with you, this three flute geometry is twisting my brain into a pretzel. Okay, okay, hold on just a minute. Settle down now. I think I know what's going on here, and it's got nothing to do with this thing having three flutes. Actually, something seemed off ever since I squared this off and saw the cross section. This is a high helix end mill. Leave it to me to pick a winner every time. Take a look at this standard end mill right next to the uh, high helix end mill. This happens to be a two flute, I don't have another three flute. Take a look at the difference in speed, let's call it, in the twist between a standard helix and this high helix. These high helix end mills are actually pretty neat. They, because of that helix angle, the cutting forces aren't as lateral, let's call it. They have much less deflection compared to a, an end mill of equal diameter with a standard helix. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. We could talk about that some other time. Because of this high helix, there's sort of more material in the core of this end mill. You know, the flutes are denser. I'm not sure how to explain this. There's a little bit more material to have to deal with in order to properly form those flutes at the end. So if you cut the tip off a standard helix end mill, be it two, three, four, once you cut the primary and the secondary, it becomes pretty apparent what the gash should look like in order to get a proper cutting tip. Here, because of the angle at which these flutes reach the end, it's um, a little bit more of a brain bender. So that third grind, or the gash, plays a much more important role in forming the geometry on the end of this end mill than it would, say, in a, a two or a four flute non-center cutting end mill. Now, I've never tried this, but I don't think this fixture and this geometry of grinding wheel can actually get the gash that we need in this end mill. Now a person could try to freehand that gash in there with a small zip wheel, a little diamond cutoff wheel, but there's two problems with that. This thing is carbide, it's tough as nails, and it would stink sitting there with a small cutoff wheel trying to color inside the lines and not knock the edges off the sharp flutes we just made. Second, this is a video about this grinding fixture. So just for poops and giggles, let's see what we can pull off with this thing. All right, so I have no idea if this is gonna work, but it's the best I can come up with given the geometry of the fixture and the shape of my wheel. Ideally, we'd have some universal fixture and a very thin wheel or a cup wheel, so this could be positioned any way we wanted it. Anyway, I wanna end up, I want that gash to slightly undercut this tooth so we have some positive rake for as much of the cutting land as we can get. And to do that, I've had to flip the fixture around 180 degrees and move to the back of the wheel. So this is effectively like tipping the wheel backwards two degrees and undercutting that tooth that's back there. I'll move the camera around in a second. I've also pulled one of my table stops in. I'm up higher on the wheel, so I'm not skimming across the bottom, and I want that grind to stop before I break into the, uh, the adjacent flute. I'll be tuning that in as I go, and hopefully I hit the center line. Now we can't come straight down with the grinding wheel because we want the two degree undercut underneath that tooth. So we're coming in from the side and stopping on center. Alright, so maybe not the most conventional looking thing in the world. The face only a mother could love, maybe. Alright, so I'm just going to go back and finish what I started earlier. Get the primary and secondary back to size and uh, we'll see how it turns out.
All right, back on the bench. I mean, it looks the part. It's certainly sharper than it was before. Let me bring you in for a close-up. You know, I ended up with some mighty thin cutting edges here. I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe this fixture isn't the best way to sharpen a high helix end mill. Though to be honest, it doesn't seem like there's really quite a lot of options. What I mean is that angle is already pretty flat. So grinding fixture aside, imagine adding a primary and a secondary cutting relief to that. It's just going to get thinner. So let's test this new grind, shall we? And where else better to test one's end mill than on your lathe? I had a guy offer to buy my lathe. We shook hands about a month ago, and as fate would have it, he decided to pick it up right while I was doing an end mill sharpening video. Hope it's not too crowded to see what's going on in here. I'll try maybe a hundred thou depth of cut using the lathe's power cross feed. At the last minute, I opted to hand feed this cut just to get a sense for how much force that needed to cut. And it was actually pretty, pretty light, so I think it's, uh, it's nice and sharp. It did kick up a bit of a burr, but as we said earlier, the flutes are junk on that end mill. And the bottom is, eh, I'd call that pretty good. So that carbide did nothing to the wheel. So while we're at the grinder, just a quick note so I sleep a little better at night. This grinder spins that way. In the video, you'll see me either working directly below the wheel or on its trailing edge. If your grinder spins the other way, you would want to work on its trailing edge. If something boneheaded happens and I come in and jam the wheel, it can kick it out. If you come in this way and you jam the wheel, man, I don't even want to think about it. So by the exceedingly exacting needs of just some dude in his garage, Overall, I've been happy with this thing. I've had it maybe about a year, and it's more than paid for itself in what I've saved in end mill tooling. It's even helped me make the odd, you know, reamer or oddball tool I've needed on the fly. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of that. Hey, hey, look what just came in. It's a four inch vise from my milling machine.